but to raise awareness and attention to, to the practices um, they call um, native forest logging. Uh, it's, it's a terrible, destructive uh, logging of our native forests. I live in the Bulga, very close to the Bulga Forest and recently I was out there and also in the Royal yeah. State Forest. And sustainable forest logging looks yeah. like clear felling. There's, there's nothing left. Yeah. I thought that they would go and pick a tree here or there um, and do it in, in a sustainable way as, as we are told. But it was just devastating to see what they actually do and it is actually clear felling everything. There's nothing, not a blade of grass left. And it was shocking. I, I, was, I was just devastated and sickened to see. So this is happening around where you live. Can you tell me a little bit more about where, where you live? Oh, uh, so it's up on the Bulga Plateau, right? Yeah, it's a little village um, of Kobe lands, and we're just on the edge of the, the Bulga State Forest. Um, I moved there because it's, it's beautiful, it's green. Uh, we spend a lot of time in the forest, outdoors. My, my two grandchildren live on our same property. We are all very lucky. I have my whole family living with me. And my son, my daughter-in-laws, my, my grandson, and um, we went out to have a look at well, and that's why we're here, because that, we were just so um, upset to see in our own backyard, and not only our own backyard, the more I Australia, but New South Wales particularly is still uh, logging in, in old growth forests really and there's so little left and when you see that it, it just makes it all the worse. Really. Can you tell me a bit about the forests that are still remaining up there? What do they look like? What do they smell like? Ah, they're, they're beautiful. There's rainforests, there's old growth, there's shady, wildlife. However, um, three years, well, four years ago now, 2019, we came very close to losing our homes and land was a very lucky little village at the top of an otherwise burned mountain. And we saw the, the decimation of the wildlife then and they ma made their way to these little pockets of, of untouched or unburned forest, which was, was so few places that weren't burnt. So obviously any wildlife that was still alive make their way to those little green corridors and patches. And um, so when it goes, what happens? What happens? To, it's not you know, hard to imagine what happens. So the old, the old trees, there's so few. And to retreat it to house um, for parrots and for nesting holes, um, so many animals need the old trees and, and the hollows. A tree can be any, up to you know, 300 years old before those hollows are, are formed. So at least 100 years old. And the forest is, is there's no trees of that age, very few trees of that age, and the ones under that still have many, many years to go. So we, we have to leave them there. They can't, they can't be logged. If we're to see forests in the future, these trees have to stay. It's as simple as that. I've, um, I'm aware that on the Bulga and Evans Plateau, there is a proud history of defending forests. 
So <laughs> these, these refuges that are left there are the result of the community coming together. Can you tell me a little bit more about, about how the community has come together to save all the forest in the past? Oh, well, in the past, um, friends of mine that I'm very lucky to have such beautiful friends that have worked and um, for most of of their adult life, they're, they're up to 30 and 40 years now, they've been up here um, trying to save the forest. They, back in their day, they did, they were responsible for many thousands of hectares um, of what would otherwise have been logged, which is now National Park. Um, these, these forests have been logged though also, and but they, I suppose, weren't so brutal in their logging. But the, yes, the, the community of Elands are really uh, rising again because you know, they've worked so hard in the past to, to save what is up there. As I understand as well, the community of Elands came together to help to defend the forest from these <coughs> fires. And so can you tell me a little bit more about the community, um, the community organising that helped to prevent these forests from burning? I hear that you were a part of it. Um, yeah, well, um, a lot of the community stayed and uh, decided to stay in Elands and fight the fires and largely our village was saved because of the local, um, it, was, it was called the Black Swans and it was a local group of, of people that went out every night mm -hmm. and just held the, the containment lines basically because um, unfortunately uh, the fire brigades all have to go home at a certain time and they will just leave unfortunately and have to come back the next day. So I think really what saved us was every night our Black Swan Brigade went out and held the line until the fire brigade came back the next morning. And we were working at that time with forestry. Um, we were all on the same side. We were fighting the same battle. Uh, so you know, I understand that, that uh, we need transition of jobs and we're not against uh, plantation sustainable logging. But, but this is a very different type of logging and um, you know, unfortunately we're on the other side again now. So there are some contractors who are, oh not contractors, there are some workers who have arrived um, to begin work here today, mm. um, who I imagine are a little bit frustrated by not being able to get into their place of work. Yeah. What would you say to the forestry workers who are concerned about the job security, um, who can't work today due to your actions? Uh, I, I'm sorry for that, um, but from where I sit and from what I see, I have no choice. I can understand their side of it, um, but yeah, I have no qualms to sit here. I, I just really would like to make just just people that um, live in, in not in the forest, that live in the towns and cities, to really understand what is happening in the forest and it, it's a brutal attack on, on the little bit of, of forest that's left and I, do, I feel I have to sit here to do this because otherwise how will anyone ever know and I wouldn't have known uh, only that I lived close by and was able to go out and have a look. So many people have no idea about what's happening in their forests and these are our public forests. Um, and they're logging them to the road and so what was once a beautiful bulb of forest of Pato driving across from Elands to Walter and it will look like um, uh, cattle country if they do what, what they're proposing to do. Uh, it's unbelievable. It, it truly is unbelievable and until you see it you, you find it hard to believe. So why should people who don't get to live amongst the trees, why should they care that the forests are being chopped down? What do they provide for the greater community in the mid north in the mid coast? Well, there's so many things they provide. Beauty, shade, shelter, habitat. Um, and then also uh, the water at the Bulgapado is the top of the catchment for the Hastings River. The filtration just of having the trees there, um, the shade, the uh, runoff if there's no trees, then subsiding if there's runoff. Yeah. There's so many reasons why we shouldn't chop, Not I think we should stop chopping down trees right now. Every 
from now on we shouldn't be able to chop down any trees. They're that valuable. There's, it's, they're, you know, they're the lungs of our planet. There's, there's so many reasons. And uh, there's so many other alternatives now. We Surely we've come to the time that we can look at other um, renewable hemp, bamboo. There's many. Uh, this is just it's antiquated. It's last century. And you know, we have to be able to to preserve these trees for the good of everyone. So, the Mayor of Port Macquarie, Peter Fenton, came out on the radio the other day in opposition to the blockades happening in Lawn Forest and to the protesters who are doing these illegal protests. Mm. Um, is he saying that the logging industry is important and we need timber to rebuild houses that were destroyed in the in the natural disasters mm. that are becoming more frequent with climate change? Mm. He didn't mention climate change, but... Mm. Um, so. How do you feel about this statement from the mayor and what would you have to say to her? Well, I, I had to listen to it twice because I couldn't believe my ears to hear somebody say that they would support stronger laws um, for protesters. My goodness. Um, I, I, would, I would love to invite her to come and have a look at what I see. And if she can come out into the forest and see what, what's happening, and still have that attitude, then, um, you know, that, that, that's a very sorry state. And, and that, you know, she would, uh, hopefully she will win the election on that um, statement. Well, you know, I hope it's the downfall, really, because, you know, that sort of just seems to be so out of line and so out of touch. You know, it's quite, we are on the brink. You, know, you don't have to look very far to see the natural, natural disasters happening everywhere. In the 10 years I've lived in Elan, I've seen the worst floods, the worst fires, the drought. Um, it, there's, there's natural disasters on epic scales happening everywhere. Um, and to deny that and to think that we can go on business as usual, it, it, it's just um, baffling. Mm. So, what are the demands of Save Gold for Forest, the community action group? What What do they want to, to change? Um, what do you want to change? Yeah, well, we want to stop all native forest logging. That definitely needs to stop. Um, and, you know, sustainable plantation logging, which they do, and they, they do that well. We just want them to stop all native forest logging in New South Wales. End of story. How can people come and support the campaign? Uh, well, we have a fabulous forest camp in Eland. Uh, if you haven't been to Eland, perfect reason to come up. Beautiful waterfalls, swimming pools, and the forest camp is a, a very welcoming, uh, beautiful space. I'm, I'm blown away by uh, how it's come together so, so beautifully. There's lots of information that people can actually find out for themselves. Um, what I'm saying, you know, I've had to, I live there so I see it, but also just from research I've, I've discovered some terrible facts, you know, that there's, there's a lot to learn, there's a lot, by talking to people, uh, we have uh, citizen science um, treks into the forest, um, it's wonderful, it's a wonderful place to meet like-minded people and also be able to do things that will make a difference if they feel passionate to to help make a difference, not just for the Bulga forest, but to all forests, and definitely to all forests, native forests in New South Wales. Sure. Other states have already um, passed a law to say that they will stop native forest logging, not soon enough, but it's a start, but New South Wales has yet to make any stand on that. Thank you, Shaz, for um, 